In the last video, we examined analysis of variance. We took a look at the example from uh, our statistical concepts text from Lomax and House Vaughn. And uh, we're following along with them in, in our uh, videos. So our next step, we see what our analysis of variance was previously. You could just watch the last slide, our last set of videos, so this can keep you on track. We've got an F value of 6.8 and significant at 0 0.001. I won't walk through that again since we just did it, but amongst the things we requested was residuals. So once we requested those residuals, uh, we looked at the unstandardized residuals, which are basically our deviation scores for the dependent variable. So we can see how far away a person's score is from their expected score in that individual group. Uh, so basically, how far away they, are they from the mean? Um, and we did deviation scores and sums of squares in class uh, previously. So now that we have the residuals, we can do some tests. So for example, let's start off with a test of normality. We're going to go to Analyze and Descriptive Statistics. We're going to explore some of those residuals. Uh, for normality, so I hit explore and the dialog box pops up. I guess I already have residual in there. If I hadn't, I would just take the residuals for labs and pop it into the dependent list. Next, if you want to look at plots, I already have selected histograms and normality plots. Those may not be selected already for you, but we're going to take a look at the histogram, basically the shape. We're going to take a observe whether or not there looks to be some sort of normality going on. Uh, we can look at the residual data and uh, also do a normality test to see whether or not there is any significant difference from normality. I'm going to go ahead and click continue and OK. Well, we get our number of cases. Everyone was included 100%. We can see our mean is zero. This is a great check, as my students know. When you are doing your deviation scores, they should sum to zero. We have a standard error for those scores as well. We can also check to see our kurtosis and skew. Relatively small skew and kurtosis going on here. Uh, I guess an absolute value of two is what we have suggested for us. So as long as it's not beyond that plus or minus two value, we can say that it's uh, relatively good start to uh, normality, but you also might want to check out the significance test. So we can take a look at the Shapiro-Wilk test here, and we can see that for residual labs, we can cut across to our uh, statistic of 0.958, and we can see that it is not significant, so that for our output, this suggests that this is uh, not, because it's not statistically different, that this would be, uh, it's not different than the normal distribution, or at least not significantly so. Um, and then we can also check with the histogram. And we can see a little bit maybe of some of those effects of skew and kurtosis. But in general, we have not actually violated the assumption here, which is the most critical uh, issue that we can. But we can also take a peek at some other uh, graphs, for example, here is a stem and leaf plot. I, I usually think of a stem and leaf plot as just a sideway histogram. We have our QQ plots. So we have expected normal versus observed values. We like to see values right on these lines. We see a little bit of deviation, but not too much. This is actually not a bad uh, from expected to uh, what we actually observe. This is uh, a, a pretty good linear function. And then we also have a uh, residual for our labs with this kind of box plot. We can observe where the mean is as well as uh, uh, peripheral values. So all of this together gives us an idea that normality is within reason. And uh, if it hadn't been, we may be doing a different test, but it'd be reasonable under the normality assumption to do our analysis of variance. Previously, we talked about variance. I'll just go back to that very quickly. Our Levine's test said, are, is there a 
significant difference amongst variances. And in the last set of videos, we looked at the standard deviation and Levine's test, and we said, no, well, it's not significant. And the standard deviations seem relatively close to one another. So that's the standard deviations here. So we did not violate uh, hom homogeneity of variance, and also we have not violated normality. If we had, one of the areas we would look at is our test here would be significant, and we would see a little bit more violation than we observed at histogram of residuals. So what else can we do? Well, we also want to know about independence, and I think in your textbook you should have been reading uh, about, of course, we would love to have random selection and from the population and random assignment, but we can also do a quick check to see whether or not there's random scatter in a similar way. Uh, you know, Lomax and Hauslong go into this in their textbook that we use. Uh, so let's take a peek at what that might look like. We could go over to our graphs. I'm going to go to legacy graphs and scatter. I'll go ahead and select simple. And in our y axis, I'm going to go ahead and put in those residuals. And in our x axis, we want to look at the difference amongst levels of attractiveness. And I will go ahead, I'm not going to do anything fancy with the chart, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And we get a graph. In your textbook, uh, we could click on the chart. Actually, I'll go ahead and do it. But first, we can kind of see uh, some of the, as we examine the scatter plot, we expect that, well, the point should be pretty much randomly scattered above and below that zero point here. So we could go in here and click on our box in SPSS. Uh, under options, we can go ahead and put in a y-axis reference line. And instead of being positioned at a negative 2.0, we'll go ahead and put in the value of zero and click on close. And that's only meant to be a reference for us as we visually observe whether or not there's scatter here that seems to be above and below, uh, above and below that line of zero. It seems to be the case, which is just a visual check for independence of groups. In an ideal world, you will have random selection, or at least random assignment at minimum for independence. Uh, but this is a way to, even if you do have that, you could check to see whether or not something is an issue for residuals around zero. So let's imagine some of our analyses, some of the violations that we discussed with uh, analysis, uh, with, with looking at variance, homogeneity of variance, and normality. I'm going to just go ahead through the procedures so you've seen them once, and I'll do them in class. Uh, the, one of the non-parametric procedures we discuss is the uh, Kruskal-Wallace test, and also we've tested, look, examined the uh, Welch and Brown force, force the, easy for me to say, right? <laughs> um, and we're going to go ahead and check how we could do this. So I'll go back to our original data. Under Analyze, I'm going to go to Nonparametrics. And we're going to use the legacy dialog boxes for now. I can see that I have several options here. Maybe you've come here before to do a chi-square test. We're going to go to, or even an independent uh, a t test, we're going to go to k independent groups. k is number of groups. So now we have, can have more than just two independent groups and conduct a nonparametric statistics. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. I will request, well, already default, we have the Kruskal-Wallace uh, test already set up for us. I'm going to go ahead and put our number of statistics courses in as our dependent measure. And as our independent measure, I will put in levels of attractiveness, our grouping variable. And just like with our t-test, we have to define these, but instead of one through two, we have a maximum value of one, or minimum value of one, a maximum value of four for our groups. Uh, I could also do this test with a subset of these groups by putting in different values. I could put in a minimum of two, maximum of three, and I would just compare group two to group three. 
Instead, I will just click continue. We're going to check all of these groups. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I end up with our test. We can see that there as well. There's eight people per group. That looks right. We have the mean rank. Uh, it's the rank order from the smallest to the largest of the dependent variables. And we can see by group we have uh, 7.75, 15, 18, and 24. And we actually have our test statistic. Well, we should be familiar with p-values by now, so the first thing that should draw our attention is that this significance level, this p-value, is 0 0.005. This means that the statistical significance is, is meaningful for the uh, mean ranks in this case. And that uh, we have a difference in our means, as we observed in our analysis of variance. Now, we don't have to do this test, but this test could support the parametric test. And in cases where something, you know, one of our uh, issues uh, for significant for our uh, for testing our assumptions has been violated, we, we can come here and use this instead. So an option to our analysis variance. Another way we can do this is by going to Analyze and General Linear Model, or I'm sorry, go to Compare Means. We can also do the one-way analysis variance here. Part of the reason we don't do it this way to begin with is just simply there's a more uh, one-way analysis of variance using the other model, the other being the general linear model for univariate. It's a much more powerful uh, set of tools that we have here that we'll see where we can do regression, we can do random effects. So we'll be using this all semester, but temporarily let's go ahead and we're going to use this one-way ANOVA. Set it up the exact same way we did before in that we have a grouping variable we put in as a factor. That's our fixed effects. And we have our outcome number of statistics labs. Under options, we could ask for, you know, none of these options are checked. We can always ask for our descriptive data. Usually a good idea if this is the only test you're running. Homogeneity of variance test. Well, we've seen that. There's another way to do that. Uh, look for that, uh, whether or not variances are equal. We have two of our uh, non-parametric tests, and we'll go ahead and select both. And I'll go ahead. It's interesting to plot our means and see what we observe as well. I'll go ahead and click Continue. And OK. All right. We have our descriptive statistics, a little bit more informative than some of what we've seen before, but the means and standard deviations should be familiar as you're going along and practicing. You can prove this to yourself. Again, our test of homogeneity of variance. Hey, another way of getting homogeneity of variance. We've done that once already. So we've seen this information before, but it's another way of gathering that information. Here, you could even test if the homogeneity is violated. You could go down to one of our other tests for non-parametric statistics. Our F values, well, we have our between and within groups. So for the one-way ANOVA, very simple, straightforward. Instead of having error versus our group effect, we have between groups versus within groups. We can cut across this between, see the sum of squares, and that the mean squares is the same as before. So is the F value of 6.8. So is the significance level. Same test, different way of getting to it. More importantly for this portion is our significance tests for our non-parametric procedures. So our first one, the Welch test, and, and the second one, the brown Forsyth test, is 0 0.002 for significance level. Uh, we can basically say that there's a significant difference here. Uh, so it's very similar, again, to the other tests we've seen and the F test. But in this case, we don't necessarily just rely on the parametric model of analysis of variance. Of course, we'll talk more about these tests in class. And then again, we plotted our means, which we've done before. But you know, this is just another way of doing the analysis of variance. So that should cover most of what we looked at in class for analysis of variance for some of the non-parametric tests. 
Um, in class, we'll go maybe more in depth about what some of these tests are and uh, what it means if we have a violation of one of these uh, uh, assumptions, such as normality. But the goal of this video is certainly to just get you uh, the ability to examine some of the potential violations and then the alternative if something is violated you can go uh, one of the, the assumptions are violated you can have some of these alternative tests which uh, will be very helpful for you in the future.